I felt called to garden in this season. I had never felt this compelled to garden in my life. I thought that the obvious answer was that God must have wanted me to be a faithful steward. While this is true, it hadn't occurred to me until last week that He wasn't just calling me to steward my possessions well. He was calling me to tend to my soul. I'll explain what I mean by telling you a story. One day, a farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was gathering the seed, some fell among the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places, where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow, but when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Other seeds fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still. Other seeds fell on good soil, where it produced a crop 30, 60, or even a hundred times what was sown. I've just read to you the parable of the sower, spoken by the mouth of Jesus. If you don't get it, don't worry. The people he spoke to didn't understand it either, so he spelled it out for them. He said, When anyone hears godly wisdom and does not seek to understand it, Whatever seed that was sown into their heart quickly gets snatched away. This was the seed that fell along the path. The seed that fell on rocky ground refers to someone who hears God's word and receives it with joy. But since they have no root, they only last a short time. When trouble or persecution comes, they quickly fall away. The seed that fell among the thorns refers to someone who hears the word but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, making it unfruitful. But the seed that fell on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop, yielding 30, 60, or even 100 times what was sown. In this story, the seed and the sower are constants. There are no bad seeds or bad sowers. The only variable is the soil. I am the sower, the seed is the word, and the soil is the condition of my soul. If my soul is dry and hardened, the seed cannot take root. If my soul is cluttered with worries and greed, there won't be room for the seed to grow. This world is pretty terrible at helping us take care of our souls. In fact, it often misleads us to prioritize things that destroy our souls, such as the love of money, power, or prestige. Richard Foster said, superficiality is the curse of our age. I find this to be incredibly true, especially because of how easy it is to get caught up in the whole comparison game. For me personally, I relate most to the seed that fell among thorns, the cluttered soul. As you can imagine, working on Instagram for an extended period of time can shift your priorities quite a bit. In this season, I will be tending to my soul by weeding out priorities that get in the way of my time with God. I want the word to take deep roots in my heart and show me what it really means to be a follower of Christ. An author that I've been admiring named John Ortberg said, My soul becomes shallow when my interests and thoughts go no further than myself. A deep soul has the capacity to understand and empathize deeply with other people, not just himself. A deep soul notices and questions and doesn't just go with emotions. A deep soul lives in conscious awareness of eternity, not simply today. When you come across godly wisdom, words that ring true to your soul, what do you do with it? Because the word of God is a seed, and it needs good soil to grow. So apply it. Cultivate it. Let it take root in your heart and you will reap the abundant harvest.
just released my foundational series of guided meditation videos called The Abundant Life. If you struggle with anxiety, restlessness, depression, or just want to take the next step in your faith and personal growth, I highly recommend signing up. At the beginning of every week, you will receive a 15-minute video that dives deeper than the ones I post here on YouTube. You can sign up at girlintheword.com slash theabundantlife. I'm so excited to go on this journey with you.